okay so this chapter 12 patient teaching so the previous question we found the communication so communication also one of the part of patient teaching so if we are not good in the communication how we has to teach my patient how we has to re-educate them right how we should reinforce them so this chapter including the patient care by teaching so first of all to understanding the patient teaching we need some terminology related to the teaching or what are the different way we has to teach our patient as a example here we said like auditory learning auditory uh, system right so i'm talking you listening this is simple uh, auditory learning learning by hearing and listening so when i have interact with the patient always i has to introduce who i am i am mr b rn for today I am RN for you. So I have to introduce myself, make a friend, good relationship with the patient, then go for the next. And during communication with the patient, we always try to make a trustable relationship with the patient. Right? And when I teach, if they only listening, this is called auditory and sometimes we have to visual media means the procedure are showing in the videos and a patient can see it's called visual learning technique visual means learn something watching reading like some video clip about the procedure we has to show and patient can see and learn so as an example patient need to use the insulin so you know that defined kind of insulin and insulin we use a special kind of needle this needle called insulin needle and there are some technique how to withdraw the insulin from the bile and how to mixture short acting insulin with a long uh, acting insulin like blood gene with lenta so if i have a video clip patient can watch it and then they can learn after watching i will tell them can you show me how insulin withdraw how heparin you has to put and to, uh, patient demonstrate this this is called demonstration and sometimes we, we we tell remodeling what we explain what we show them what they can see in the video then they can do it is called remodeling if patient do something wrong we has to correct it we has to re-educate and this is called reinforce repeat it my friend very important information we has to know any procedure surgical procedure the doctor has to explain to the patient if patient do not understand it is my responsibilities as a rn i should make sure my patient understand it it is my responsibilities it is my accountabilities if they do not understand i will really recap it right like i am i am a rn and in the floor, there's so many patients. I'm so busy. Patient is stable. 
In the first time I explain, still patient has a question. LPN can re-educate them also. So RN has to delegate the client, right? RN has to delegate the LPN or RN who take care for which patient, who take care for what? But I say, if the patient is stable, if I educate them, if patient is stable, there is nothing new, re-educate, LPN can do this. Maybe some of the students are not agree, so they have a question. Um, yes, you could. Somebody uh, um, wrote something, you could, but I believe I can give you something good rather than to record. I can give you something good. Please text me. Um, I have everything uh, better rather than the you record. I have something really good. So just keep contact with me in a break time, okay? Definitely I do work everything um, on behind for my school. So health, uh, another one is that, um, as I told you, the RN or LPN can reinforce my patient, right? But CNA never do it. So this is reinforce. After that, give the treatment as a LPN or RN, we have to evaluate the patient. Why we should evaluate? Just check what are the, my patient outcome. If I ask you why my patient get hospitalized, answer is they want to be cured. When you, guys, healthcare person, you give the treatment, you give the comfortable care, and definitely you have some prediction. After two days or three days, patient will be good, right? means when we do the prediction patient condition and we can check the patient uh, improving or not this is called health promotion what are the target of promotion means patient is going to discharge so when patient going to discharge again time come to educate them how they has to do at home, how it has to handling their health at home. So again, you, you are RN, you has to go for teaching during the discharge. So you see how in, you are the important in hospital, you receive the patient, you take the history, you keep the documentation, give them planning, you has to contact with the healthcare provider. You evaluate the patient. You see the outcome. Then time come to say goodbye, discharging. Then you educate them again, how they deal with the case. Like patient has a asthma. The doctor give them two salbutamol and dextamethorphan steroid inhaler. So when they should use, after use, how they have to raise up their mouth. This is the education you have to tell your patient, right? So and another question sometimes and flexible asks, discharge process, when discharge process start? Discharge process start just during the admission. I know it is not clear to the some of the student. Let me explain, my friend. If nobody want to stay hospital for a lifelong, nobody want to stay hospital for a, one month. We got hospitalized because of some unpleasant, unfavorable condition. But after admission, we want to discharge from hospital. We feel cry for the home. So I said, when patient get admission, from admission, one by one step going 
final step is the discharge. So discharge process starts from the admission. One will need to know. If NPLEX board asks, discharge process start from when? Discharge start from admission. NPLEX board question. No confusion. Super, very sure. Another one is called kin um, kinestic learning. So sometimes patients need like physiotherapies, relax techniques, massage therapies, right? When you touch, patient feel good. So learning by touch or doing something, right? Another thing is willingness, strategies. So action designed to promote the health practice. So if you work in a long-term care, rehab center, hospice center, patient has to do some group work. Patient should participate in group work. Why? To motivate them. Because motivation, positive thinking, positive talk also help to healing the disease process and promote the health. So promote the health, we said. So next, what they said, they said the make a summary about the patient teaching or learning style. First of all, one is uh, just auditory, you hearing, listening, and learning. Yeah, there is a visual, sometimes it's called audio visual. You listen and watch or reading. Or if you draw something on the whiteboard, also patient can see, right? If patient is not or impaired the communication because of impairment of speaking, then you can read, tell, uh, you can write something, they read and answering. It is also a non-verbal uh, communication or visual learning process, watching. And last one, we said the kinesthetic learning or touching or doing something. And now go here, addressing the patient learning style. So people learn in a very, um, every style, most prefer one style are address each style of learning, verbal, writing, videos, also use the return, demonstrate. So um, when you interact with the patient, everybody has not same. And also prediction is not always correct. So different patient can like or feel comfortable the different way to learn. So someone can learn the videos, prefer the videos. Someone like demonstration or remodeling. So everything is there, insulin tube there, syringe there, needle there, they withdraw and they can demonstrate it in front of you. So this is talking about the different way of teaching. So we do not know which patient like what, right? Which one they feel better. So now go some factor affecting the learning. So some of the factor influencing, right? First of all, environment. So environment is a very important factor of learning. Like you sitting in your room, I'm sitting in my room and I'm using laptop. You also using laptop. We are interact through the Zoom. Both are sitting. We, you have a, some paper and pencil. If you like something, you can make a note. But is it, pos is it good if you oh, jogging in the evening, running in the field and you listening what I'm talking? right or i'm driving my car and also give a piece definitely it is not the same so a good environment is helped to learn a good setting if 
and educate my patient about how to take care of the wound. If I have a, the dressing materials, I show them, is it good? Or I just make a phone call and tell them, do this, do that. Definitely, a good environment is an important factor of learning. Also, the comfortableness. So, patient has, a, uh, has to share their history to you. But if they are not comfortable to, with you, they will not disclose their history. Some of the patients have some personal um, um, uh, data. If the patient has a uh, mental problem, psychiatry. If the patient has a sexual disease, if, they, if you are not friend with them, they will not tell their history. It is their right. They can change you anytime. So I'm saying, first of all, when you interact with the patient, you have to introduce who you are. I am Mr. B, RN for today. I am here to take care of this problem. Very gentle way. Like I have a, so many jewelries on my neck, so many bracelet in my both hand. I'm just uh, wear a dress, yo yo, right? Like a DJ. Definitely, it is not a good professional dress up, and patient will not get a trust. I'm in the club or I'm in the uh, uh, hospital or healthcare uh, provider talking with me. So I said I will be very gentle, very soft, right? Trustable. Patient can depend on me. They can rely on, on me. When I can introduce and make a relationship, patient get a trust, then they can start to verbalize their feelings. When you ask something, always ask a short question, one by one. Give them some time to organize their thinking. After ask, be silent. This silent means you are interested about the patient. You want to love listening to them. You ask something. Can you tell me who, um, who, why you are here and you are checking your mobile? Can you give me your address? You just um, if you're checking your Facebook. So this is not professional. But when you ask something, you have to try to keep eye to eye contact, good distance. Sometimes you have to little bit bend to your patient. It means you are interested about them. They can feel good, comfortable to share their history with you. A good history is the main tools to diagnose the patient problem. And this is called nursing diagnosis. So comfortableness, comfortness is a factor of communication, factor of learning. So if you are showing you are too hurry, you are too busy, and just uh, showing the procedure within a minute, it is not a good way of communication. Another way of is um, re uh, readingness. So reading. So if you know how to go, if you are a, be a good reader, so you, you can easily imagine the procedure and you can learn. Language is most important way of communication or learning. So if you and me not talk in the same language, or if we do not have common language, so language will be a barrier. So I said, if we are understand each other very well, it is so good, there are no language barrier, but if the patient do not understand, 
definitely we have to take the interpreter and interpreter should be certified authorized to work in my hospital if patient request i do not understand your language but my son can understand can you take them as interpreter no if i'm working in the nurse station another person who are not RN or anything, uh, if they understand the language, also are not allowed. Only the certified interpreter. But when you talking, always also you have to keep eye to eye contact with the patient, whatever they can understand or not. So sense, another one. So sense is also the important factor of learning as an example i can show you a patient is a visual disturbance and you are in patient at the room you thinking oh my patient do not see it is better uh, you standing or you are sitting not a professional way your body language is not good you are standing behind of the patient what you usually do not do with the patient who has a good vision right so you has to deal with the patient who has a visual impairment the way you has to deal with the other patient who have a good vision right so another if the patient is an impairment of hearing i mean hearing problem it does not mean that you are shouting loud voice no same voice you have to deal with the other patient who have a good hearing right that your body language your posture your um, position way of your movement everything is a good factor of learning and communication so now go next here some guideline for arranging of an interpreter some guideline we have to follow so always here is important you are working in the health us health system we have to follow two guidelines one is the national guideline other is the institute guidelines so arrange for interpreter who speak the patient primary language also use the professional interpreter arrange for interpreter who has some understanding of medical terminology and also say to avoid using the young children as an interpreter for parents so it is the some guidelines about the interpreter so here some purpose of patient teaching what are the purpose of teaching first of all the instruct the patient to help promotion and willingness strategies also explain the disease process treatment option and patient care so it is our responsibilities that we has to i know my patient is not a doctor but what are the patient disease i has to explain to my patient what are the different options of the treatment like patient need conservative treatment patient need radiotherapy patient need chemotherapy or patient need surgical surgery there are different options for one disease so as a healthcare provider you know which is the best but if patient feel this is good for them it is the right patient can patient can choose the treatment option and their care 
So I said, if patient is compatible, mentally, physically sound, then they, it is their right to make their decision. So when we explain the patient for disease, treatment option or care, it is their right for understanding. And this is actually the target for patient education or patient teaching. And also when patient really understand how to use the insulin, how to use the heparin, how to take care of their bronchial asthma, I'm talking about the chronic disease, or how to take care of their high blood pressure, means if they know how to use the insulin, they can be able to control the blood sugar. If they know how to use the medication, life-changing, some exercise, no alcohol, no smoking, they can control their hypertension. Because hypertension is a disease. Diabetic is a disease, chronic disease. They can eat your heart. They can bite your kidney. They can lick your brain. When you know how to control the chronic disease, you stop to progress of the disease. You promote the health. So go next here. So they said now some example of the patient teaching. One is health promotion, willingness, and disease process. Health promotion by regular exercise and proper nutrition. So every day, and I always encourage um, you, only three minute exercise can promote your health. Only three minutes. One minute push up, one minute just um, sit and stand like leg exercise and one minute deep breathing exercise, breathing control, can protect your heart, can protect um, your, I mean, sugar. So I said, regular exercise can promote our health and good nutrition or proper nutrition. So proper nutrition, it, is, it does not mean too much food. It does not mean one particular vitamin you eat, another part vitamin do not eat. So you have to good quality, good proportion of defined vitamins. Quality and quantity, both are important, right? And also it is good if you avoid the bad habit like smoking, alcohol, or weight um, within the limit, not obesity, because obesity is the important cause of the heart disease. Smoking, alcohol, important cause of the lungs disease. They lead to atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis lead to the angina. Angina lead to the myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction lead to the heart failure. And all is a disease process, right? So if your patient know how to deal with the hypertension, if your patient know how to deal with the stress, if your patient know how to um, handling the uh, stressful situation, they can promote their health. They stop the disease process. So education is most important. If patients do not know how to use the insulin, then insulin, like uh, insulin, they use the same um, site, like um, uh, dystrophy uh, developed, right? So it is a good education can protect the health. So what next? Some teachable, uh, moment, some teachable moment. Patient asks about the illness and teaching 
also the nursing in correct procedure and give the correct information. Also, Nas point out the connection of the cause of effect to the patient. So I said, sometimes you have to give them opportunity to ask the question. When they ask the question, you have to uh, find out what are the lackings, what they should know. And if anything procedure, tell them to do this. And you can observe they do wrong or right. If they're wrong, re-educate them. And also if patients have chronic disease, give them some uh, social uh, worker link, some society, so they can communicate with the groups and then they can learn and exchanging their views. And also they can adapt with the problem by learning process. Some example of teaching moment continuation like breathing and personal care. So simple breathing technique, deep breath and relax help your lungs to expand more, right? Personal care, especially it is important in psychiatry patient or long-term patient. So also if patient is too old, it is dif difficult for them to their daily living activities, but you has to encourage them to participate their uh, personal care. Like patient is ready to wear a shirt, what color they should wear? You can give them two options, which there are two shirts, which one you want to wear. Tell them to combing their hair on self. Definitely, you have to help them. The ROM, motion exercise, you have to help. But better participate. Tell them to participate in their personal work. Also, measurement every day or daily body weight, ambulation, so movement every day, little bit, little, right? If a patient come after surgery, so after surgery, after certain hour, just help to patient to moving because movement help to movement of their gastrointestinal system and help to prevent the constipation. So also their meal, try to in, uh, engage them to eat by themselves or prepare their food if possible. Also toileting, we have to help in long-term care patient treatment option. We have to explain what are the different treatment option and also medication administration. But we have to choose the drugs and we do not, but here is important, we do not trust the patient about the medication. If patients say, I used to take the pethidine, just trust me, I will not take too much medication, just give me a pethidine. Also, uh, doctor not prescribe, but I need tonight. But we do not trust anything like this. So also when we give the medication, we do not only ask what is your name or date of birth. We have to check their base, uh, base slide, or we have to check the documentation. And especially if the patient psychiatry, mental health, how we have to trust on them. And the development of teaching plan based on nursing process. Assessment, identifying the patient learning needs, also assess the patient um, reading to learn, also need to diagnose. So, First of all, assessment is super important. If you do not know how to assessment, how we have to go for the diagnosis, 
if you do not know how to assessment how you have to find out the patient problem first of all you have to find out what are the underlying cause of the disease what is the lackings of my patient if patient if you identify this is the lackings patient do not understand you can re-educate them but if you do not know how you have to re-educate if your patient does not read and if you do not know that how you tell them okay do not need to read just watch these videos and learn something demonstrating so nursing diagnosis after the assessment we go for the diagnosis deficiency so like i said about the learning if patient do not know how to read this is means deficiency of reading also everybody's knowledge level is not same if patient knowledge level is very low definitely we has to respect equal whatever they have a master's degree phd or no education they are equal to us but the level of education can help to understand of teaching so if patient is really good very good uh, level of education or knowledge it is easy to get the easy can the it is easy to learn easy to get right so re uh, reading nest for enhance the knowledge and description so also other things is if patient is know how to read it is easy for them to read the instruction or any medication description right so now go here next one and uh, now here we said assessment then diagnosis right assessment or analysis then diagnosis after that go for planning planning so after diagnosis you have to do what you should do for the patient what system is get involved in the disease disease process then you have to transfer the patient in particular department if patient has a joint problem you send them in musculoskeletal system department if patient need heart care you send them cardiovascular unit or you have to make them cardiologist so you has to make a plan if patient has a shortness of breath respiratory distress you tell them to lie down semi fallar position or high fallar position comfort nets so this is the part of your planning right also when you are planning after that patient do this you help to them to do this this is implementation or intervention so here is the important i said my patient has a shortness of breath because of bronchial asthma or copd i tell them to lie down fallar position this is in um, implementation doctor give them salbutamol ibohalar or inhaler you educate them how to use it you make sure patient take it this is in implementation or intervention after i mean time is going on after that you come and see what are the effectiveness of treatment right what are the evaluate to see the progress of the disease so this is called evaluation so determine if the patient has learned the information or not or outcome of the patient finally whatever we do we have to keep the documentation this 
document help your patient, this documentation save your license. And this documentation help to other nurse who is going or replaced by you in the next shift, they can read and can get some quick ideas about the patient. Next, resource for the teaching the hand uh, out. First of all, associate and foundation health departments, also patient education website. So this actually important for the chronic patient, chronic disease. So if patient has a chronic kidney disease, there are so many information in the Googling. So they can Google or they can find out some website, they can educate themselves. But if you know, you have to help them till, okay, go this website, find it out and read it. And also there's so many department, if the psychiatry department, they can help them. If patient has a contagious disease, infection, their infection control department, they can help the patient. If patient is disabled, patient is go for the dialysis. So they are disabled patient. The government can help them. You can tell to this department, you have to contact to get some benefit. And also there are so many foundation or social worker can work for them. Also, you give them the right access to contact with them. And now go here. So in case of the teaching that client, so children, what we has to do. In case of the children, use the age appropriate information. Definitely the, uh, the children, they like to learn during the play. Definitely the way you have to deal with the adult and the way you have to deal with the children is not same. Sometimes you have to pretend you are also the children, baby. You are going in the same level to talk, right? So it is very important um, is related communication. And some teenagers, sometimes they need the privacy. They don't like to share their information in front of their patient, parents. So you have to talk to them, isolated, right? So age group is very important for communication, for way of teaching. Especially here we talk about the teaching for children. Use a doll or teddy bear during care of the patient. You try to motivate their concentration to the doll or teddy bear. In the same time, you have to check their vital sign. Allowing the child to perform the treatment on the doll. So like you are giving the treatment to the teddy bear, right? They can play, they can learn because this age group, they very imaginary states. The baby, especially the child, uh, young children, they always like to talk. They always interact with their toy and they feel toy talk to them, right? Always tell the truth when you're dealing with the patient, what about the disease, what is dangerous it is, but you has to be tell, you should be professional. Also take advantage the opportunities to speak at a school or daycare center. So if the patient has any kind of infectious disease, you have to tell to the school. So school also um, uh, take the step to stop the spreading of infection. And other things is in the school, also the good opportunity for the learning of the disease or health as well. And now elderly patients, right? Elderly patient, 
have the uh, caretaker or family present have caretaker family allow plenty of time be alert to conclude that the patient does not understand be patient also use plenty of repetition because when we deal with elderly patient most of the times they are degenerative change their brain undergo the atrophy alzheimer it is difficult to remember so you need some extra time and sometimes elderly patient talk too much you have to listen then you have to educate them and also you have to have the patients to listen then should explain should educate and also elderly patient can forget easily you have to recap it redo it again and again right and also when you deal the elderly patient you have to uh, uh, think about the patient is abusing or not because the children or elderly patient most of the chance to victim for uh, as a abuse elderly patient especially elderly alzheimer or dementia patient mostly victim so here or abuse educate uh, the patient teaching have the patient um, restart what they talk so what they learn they can redo it exchange with you and you have to find it out what is missing and also ask the question to determine the patient is understand or level of understanding ask the patient to give a return demonstration so as i told you if patient has to withdraw the blood sugar level blood sample for it calculate the blood sugar how to withdraw the blood you have to tell can you show me one more time please when they do you have to check they do a proper way or missing something then re-educate some guideline what they can get from internet explain the preferred site for healthcare information is kinds of the chronic disease and tell the patient to avoid the reading blocks about the disease so if the patient too much read the blocks they will be get confused confusion is not good because of confusion or too much information they will be um, undergo the anxiety panic encourage their client to use the familiar site right this already established as a good source of information and also better if elderly patient need to long time care participate the family members in with the care encouraging the client to use the familiar site that contain the accurate information and urge the patient to avoid the site like wikipedia why because wikipedia anybody can learn anybody can read anybody can put the information anybody can build it so wikipedia is not that much good for education about the health or particular disease and here they said the some guideline for internet explain the author credentiality or education background very important explain that commercial website selling products are not reliable source so they has to tell some faults for advertisement of their website so if you really know the good source you have to share with your patient right 
and if is there any alternative of the um, website you also give it to them so information in connection feature so always it is important when we take the history from the patient this history on based of some data health data sign and symptom when we get the sign and symptom we have to connecting each other to find it out to exclude what system is get involved is it respiratory is it cardiovascular so clinical coordination or connection coordination is very important to diagnose the patient how we have to go to get this information your anatomy or physiological knowledge your pathological knowledge the knowledge can help you to coordinate different data to diagnose the patient right and also information sometime related what are the source resources where patient come what are the education level what are their community where they interact with the others and also it is very important we have to supervision our patient and we when we go to choose the different staff to care the patient means delegating because definitely a very bad patient you has to tell most skill experience aren't to deal with them patient come after the surgery you has to give them the most experienced nurse definitely you will not give the new nursing graduate student you give the new nurse who is a stable patient so your supervision your delegation very important because you are the team leader and after all of this means assessment then diagnosis then planning outcome or intervention then you have to sit what are the final outcome for the patient for discharging this is called post conference so after post conference we have to find it out uh, what are the final outcome or patient is ready to discharge or not right so this is also the part of uh, teaching for the patient 